and show you how to paint this table. Um, I've already done the chairs for the customer and she's asked me to do the uh, bottom of the table. It's going oil based uh, white satin wood. Um, it's a bit of preparation before we do any painting as usual. It needs washing down first, get rid of any of the grease and dirt um, and then it needs a good sand especially where there's any runs or there's any chips bits and bobs, sand it all back um, and then it needs a coat of undercoat and two coats of satin wood so again, it always starts with a brew I mean, that's not just the table took the top off obviously the top was for maker so uh, right then washing it down you'll need a cloth a scouring pad and some warm soapy water I'm going to do the bottom half first turn it the other way and then do the top half so I'm going to turn it up the other way and I'll show you the underneath it's come up quite well. That's the mucky bit. Let's have a look. Just concentrating on this bit, I'm going to wipe it with a cloth and see how much comes off. And what I'll, what I'd usually do is go around and probably wipe all four of the bottom bits and allow the water to work up some of the muck and then after I've done that using your scouring pad give it a scrub to dry now and we're ready for sanding. This piece of sandpaper is what I used when I was doing the wall and it's actually smooth enough now to give this um, its first sand. This is P60 but like I say it's already uh, been used and now it's a lot smoother. So I'm going to get a bit of sand over with that first and then I've got some P180 and I'm going to give it a sand over with that and then I'm going to wipe it down with methylated spirits um, I'm actually going to sand this outside so I'm not going to show you much of the sanding this is more about the painting uh, than the sanding but you know again principle heavy surface Let's give it a good sand. Always keeping with the direction you're going to lay off the paint. And where it's worn off some of them parts, just give it an extra sand there. Just take any more loose off and cut them sharp edges off. So once you've used that sandpaper, dust it off and then use your P80, P180 sorry. Dust it off and then we're ready for the methylated spirits. But like I say I'm going to go and sand this outside. Make sure you wear your dust mask as well. Sanded off now, and uh, I'm going to give it a wipe over with methylated spirits. 
far better to using this than white spirit or you know terps this just evaporates off and it helps take any dust out of uh, burr wood as well and it's good for degreasing prepares the surface a little extra for the paint so a little bit on a cloth wear some gloves and give it a wipe over we're ready to do the undercoat now this is what I'm using and I've already got some ready now and I've got it at the right consistency to what I want it so I've added a little bit of white spirit to that so what I'm going to do is turn this the other way up and get the camera a bit closer in and uh, I can have a look I've worked my brush into my paint on the side so it's nice it's loaded and what I'm going to do is these triangle bits and these flat bits and I'm going to leave this centre and do that when I turn it the other way up um, so it's always making the decision where you're going to start first and I'm going to start on that flat there I'll bring the camera in closer soon and you can see what's going on It's all about getting an even coat of paint. Only one left to do, and let's have a look at the difference. I've already done them three. Big difference. <clears throat> it's really good paint, this Dulux. Uh, brilliant white undercoat. It's, uh, the opacity of it is really good, and it dries quite quickly. So I've turned it back over the other way now, and uh, I'm going to bring this centrepiece down. Um, all the way around really and then I'll do the legs 
I'll just show you these sides. Trying to not block the camera, but I'll just bring that on as well. Feather everything off, don't leave any thick edges on anything. I'm going round and do the other side now and then I'll show you doing the leg. I'm onto the legs at the bottom now. And this is the area where there's more burr parts. Now I've not spot primed it because I find that more difficult. You have to feather it in just the same. Um, and with this undercoat what I find is if you give it a coat by the time I've gone round the four legs it's absorbed into some of the areas and you can touch it up a bit and I find it's a lot better to get a good finish just by building the coats up rather than spot priming. Anyway. Same on the other side. Three down, one to go. Uh, can have a look at some of this. the other side and we're done. The first coat on now of the undercoat so we'll let that dry overnight and we'll come back to it. 
the undercoat's dry now so it needs a light sand down and I'm going to use this sponge pad really good it's not going to wear through any of the um, parts what we've touched up and then dust it off as usual so I've just been over it with this with the pad and I've noticed this little mark down here so I'm going to fill that using some two-pack filler I'll just show you what I'm going to use and that's the activator really good stuff for small jobs like this it dries really quick and it's not going to hold me up well this is the paint I'm using gee it looks satin wood really good for things like this now the brush I've kept in water overnight so with that I'm just going to let the water drip out a little bit because I'm going to use the same brush for the satin wood right. and then you've got a few choices you can knock it out on a board or you can uh, use a plastic bag which I do sometimes a rubbish bag and I'll just squeeze it out Now, because it's got undercoat still in it, I want to remove a bit of that. So, a little bit of terps. Sorry, white spirit, not terps. Completely different things, terps and white spirit. White, white spirit comes from petroleum and terps comes from tree sap so big difference okay my brush is ready get the paint out I'm not going to bore you with that bit but strain it as well. Make sure you work your brush into your paint before you start. And you've not got any trapped white spirit in the stock because that can cause a problem halfway through your job. Right, I've already done that anyway. Same principle as last time. I've turned it upside down and I'm going to do the triangle bits, these flat bits, and then I'm going to leave this centre for when I turn it up the other way. Again, you're not after trying to get it to cover perfectly you want an even coat and make sure it's laid off nicely that's all it's allowed to be a bit grinny at this stage I'm just going to finish this side I mean, you can't see it but I need to finish this
So you get the idea. And what you can do as you're going round, always keep checking over and you can make sure you've got no runs on anything. So I'll turn it up the other way in a minute and I'll show you some of the legs. Don't forget to give your filler a light sand. Doesn't need much. You've got to try and be careful not to touch the other side. And you can use a smaller brush if you want. finally just finishing with these legs Again, it's not about flooding the paint on, it's about getting an even coat so then you build up the actual opacity of the, uh, the coverage. this other side and then I'll show you the other leg.
that's its first coat of satin wood. Going to let that dry overnight and put the final coat on tomorrow. Give you a quick look around that. It's come up really well. It's come up really well. That's uh, satin wood's dry now. I've left that overnight. First thing you want to do is give it a light sand again. And then dust it off and you're ready to uh, put the final coat of satin wood on. I've cleaned my brush out like last time. I've, I've kept it in water overnight. So I've knocked the water out. And I've worked it back into my paint. I'm ready to go. I've turned it upside down. What I'll do this time is I'll get you closer in if I can to see, you know, so you can see some of this uh, brush action. I'm going to move around and do the other side. The other side. People always say, why are you putting another coat on? It looks all right, that does. Well, you can't have to tell the difference when you actually do put another coat on. I'll just do a bit here and then you can have a look at the difference. can probably already tell from there but let's have a closer look so you can see what I've just done and the change is just there but you can see the difference how white that looks compared to that so you're just building the opacity of the paint up 
and that's the key to getting a great finish you can't just slap a load of paint on uh, I'll show you the uh, the leg in a minute and, and the finished thing final coat like I say um, it's basically like all the other coats you have to just get an even coat on and laying it off and getting rid of the brush marks no need to flood the paint on at all There you go, I'll show you the finish. So it's come up quite well. You wouldn't know if it's uh, hand painted or sprayed. You'd have to get really close to tell. There you go.